as it is today, my advice is that the parties come together and work for the people. You could see today there's a, 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 a gradual erosion of the tenets of democracy. Our political compass is heading in the wrong direction. So there's a need for the parties to come together to be able to rescue the situation as it is today. Okay, sir. So the final question is, so what advice do you have to, for Nigerians, especially the electorate? Well, for, for Nigerians, well, which is for all of us, we need to take issue of governance very serious. We need to ensure that only those who are competent, who have the capacity, who have integrity to be able to serve faithfully and use the resources of the nation effectively for production are allowed into office and supported. And we should resist where things are going wrong question, which is the issue of the parties coming together. That is impossible. You're talking about coming together for election purpose. That's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about coming together for good governance and making sure that the, the people are well governed and well served. That's two different things. When it is for election purpose, it is, it is, it is self for self-benefit or no, transactional. But if it is for good governance, we can all come together and work together. And if we look at what President Obasanjo is talking about, I don't think he's talking against saying that democracy is not what we should adopt. No, he's talking about the applicability Democracy, as it's been practiced in the Western world, does not have universal acceptability and applicability. You have to look at what suits you. For example, if you look at democracy in America, where we even copy this presidential system of government, there's so many things that we've abandoned. If you today you're president of America, you can't just you know, I've never heard in America that they bought vehicles for legislators. You can't just buy cars anyhow. I have never heard you can't buy cars for first lady anyhow. Yes, there's no, in fact, in America, there's no office called office of first lady. He exists in name. And for the purpose of accompanying the president to trips, not just to have an office created with enormous budgets that are even beyond critical areas of development. No, you cannot entertain people. In America, if the president chooses today to entertain guests, he will pay for the food. If he chooses to have different dishes, he will pay for it. So he can decide, ah, my wife is going to have uh, this, uh, we're going to have lo this type of fish from Japan. At the end of the month, he has to pay for it. So these things don't happen. You don't have renovations of, of different houses for the president. You know, if the president of America goes to New York today, he says in hotel, I've accompanied the president to trip in the past. The hotel is the president of America was staying in a hotel. So these are issues. So we must look at what suits us. Again, look at how we can manage our own expense and everything. So, what about Sanjo is saying that we must not adopt this and even adopt it wrongly as we are doing it today. The last one, the last one. The last one was an issue of moving towards one party. How can we salvage that? That is a disaster. And it can be salvaged again by the same everybody coming together. Not just now political parties, but civil society. The people must resist that because it's dangerous. Thank you very much.
Okay. 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 You are the campaigner of a new Nigeria. And recently, you described the uh, former president, Atipan Baka, as your leader. If, for example, in 2027, and you are giving the opportunity to the communist party, will you do that? Then, secondly, sir. My dear, let's not talk about the election. We have a critical problem happening now. We, see, this is what I'm saying. We should all come together. Even you as a journalist should look beyond the election. People are dying of hunger. And we're talking about the election. What happens in the next election? I've said this publicly. Peter B is not desperate to be Nigerian president. And desperate to see Nigeria work. Your children are suffering. So don't ask me that type of question, please. I'm begging you. Let's talk about how to save the country. If the country is working, I mustn't be president. Let the country work for our future. Okay, I want the children of here to be looked after. Okay, uh, the next one is you said that uh, Nigerians should try to resist uh, those who want to stop the good governance of Nigeria. Particularly the last election, we watched the exercise. We know that a lot of Nigerians supported you and they voted for you. But at the end, in, in this kind of scenario, how do Nigerians they continue to voice it out and say, this is not what we expected. It has to be consistent. And we, I, I'm not saying they should go and start destroying things. We must remain civil and within the law, but consistently say no to bad governance. Well, <laughs> uh, yes, good evening. Abaya Makimola is my name. I report for Wazobia, Nigeria. Thank you. Um, let's go back to IPAC. Would you say IPAC as the umbrella body of all political parties in Nigeria has lived up to its expectation? If no, what would be your recommendation? How do you think IPAC can get it better for us to have the democracy we are all aiming for? IPAC should go beyond being transactional and be effective and collectively opposing bad governance. That is their role. That is why they were formed. To say no when these are going wrong. And everybody can see today that these are going wrong in our country. It didn't need to be told. We now have a situation where non-party carrying members I've been appointed to be a referee in our coming elections. IPAC, civil society, and the people need to resist that. These are people, even some of them who have been part of Togre, and I'm becoming the referees. IPAC should voice out where 90% of our election now ends up in court. They should voice out where our courts have become cause of favors, cause of procurement, rather than cause of justice and the law. They should voice out where a situation where you have three recent judgments that are contradictory. Look at what is happening in Kanu, Zamfara, and Plateau. All geared through opposition parties. I don't need to be a member of those parties to say that things are wrong. They are wrong. They are not good for democracy. My party is not in any of them. But it shouldn't be. Look at the elections that have happened recently. In Kogi and everything, nobody's talking about the people who were killed, people who were men, and everything. Everybody is saying congratulations to something you know that was wrong. That's where IPAC, civil society, and everybody should voice out. It's not about who it benefits today or tomorrow. I've said it before. Nobody is buying fuel cheaper. Nobody is buying food cheaper. 
If anybody knows where it's cheaper for it, one party or the other, show me so we can go there and buy. I want to ask, perhaps it is time for restructuring. Nigerians have been talking about restructuring for a while now and looking at everything that is happening, do you think that perhaps this is the time you know, to begin to go beyond talking about restructuring and actually coming together to hold a kind of maybe confab or conference? I said it last, in my last conference that we need it immediately because we need to talk. We need to show, like I said at the beginning of this conference, that we are our compass is headed in the right, wrong direction. And if we don't do anything, it will consume everybody. And I keep consuming everybody. Some people will think today they are benefiting now because it's this. No. In a situation where you have a looming crisis and we're playing about it. We've been warned of we're going to face hunger next year. We're using almost 100% of our revenue to service debt. And nobody can say what, how we pile the debts, what we use it for. In a place where instead of putting our money We've now been told we are bankrupt. Instead of now behaving like people who are bankrupt, we are still behaving like people who are still affluent. Because bankrupt people should be now be downsizing all expenditures that is not critical for development. But we are still going ahead, <coughs> living a life that is beyond our resources, even when borrowing to continue such life. So, the things we need to do, all these things are things we need to look at. We need this time to look at whether this presidential system suits us or whether we can change and go back to parliamentary system because we cannot have a situation, and that's what Abbasanjo is saying, let's have something that can suit us, whether we, it's parliamentary or presidential, it is time that we elect people who must be answerable to us. We can no longer continue to have an elected people who answer us through third parties or source comments to us and everything. It cannot continue. We need to do things differently. So I think restructuring one will help the various segments to develop simultaneously. You see it happen.